Hey everybody, welcome to Ghost Prime Transformers Reviews. Today I'll be taking a look at Earthrise Decepticon Airwave. Now he is a Decepticon and looks very much like an Autobot. The reason is, is his face mode that he's trying to represent. That was from G1 originally. In G1, it was, a, it was, it was an air base. Not called Airwave, but his MicroMaster was called Airwave. Now this guy transforms into three separate things as per the uh, instructions. You could probably get away with a few more if just by being creative. And that's one of the benefits of these, uh, these types of uh, weaponizer figures. So this guy has a third mode that's not new to Transformers, but I actually really like. Uh, he's an okay figure. I picked this guy up kind of be just because I'm waiting for some other figures to arrive. I'm, I'm waiting for a smoke screen to come and um, I'm getting kind of antsy to, to have a new figure. So I, I decided to pick him up. So that's, I wasn't going to originally. I do have his, uh, his repaint hothouse on order and I just couldn't wait to get this guy in hand and just see what I think about him. Overall, there's a lot to like about him. There's some things I'm okay with. Um, so without any further ado, let's get to the review. All right, so first things first, let's uh, take a look at the packaging. He comes in the standard Earthrise uh, packaging. Uh, his art on the side actually shows the his base mode rather than his robot mode, which I find very interesting. And the rear, I think, is the most different because if you look here, now uh, just if you want to look at the detail on his legs, it's a much brighter blue. It doesn't have that silver piece there, and a kind of a lighter gray on the black pieces. So they it looks like they may have had a light, a, a la, light last minute color change on them a little bit. I do, I do like that. I like. I think the colors they came out with in the toy are better than the ones shown in the back of these renderings. But he does, he does show three of his modes. So he has a like a missile launcher mode, which they don't show on the back here, but it is shown in the instructions. This is not his full mode. It actually extends. It's a big long runway here. On this side, you have the. This, you know, the War for Cybertron, the uh, Earthrise artwork. Bottom is legal jargon. Top is the Septicon logo with the War for Cybertron trilogy logo. Inside the packaging, as with all of them, you have the map piece right here in the center. Now he has these, you can actually see them without the red decoder. These chains right here, which correspond to the other chains in the map. The instructions all done up in the sort of teal and black. And it is pretty detailed, pretty clear instructions as they have been, as they should be. And it goes all the way to show how it connects. It does not have a instruction on how to connect this with another character or to have him be armor pieces, which I did find interesting on this guy. And so we take a look at the robot in all his glory. Now, as I mentioned on the back of the box, they just have some gray showing up here, which does not show up on the box, and it's a much darker blue. It's also a lighter gray. This is a pretty light gray to begin with. On the back, the render is a much lighter gray. The colors are much brighter on the back of the box than they are in the actual figure, which, I, like I said, I appreciate. I like this more the darker colors of this guy. Um, although if you look all the way around, do a quick turnaround of him. He does have hollow back legs, but that's acceptable, I say. Two, uh, there's the only Decepticon logos are on the arm, which become the part of the ramp. And he has some nice detail. Um, I, you know, kind of used to it by now, so I, I kind of come to expect detail from the Siege Earthrise line. He has a very interesting head. Let me see if I can get up close into that. All right, coming real close on that head sculpting, it's really hard to get a good shot of the eyes, which are painted red. Uh, the middle, I don't know if that's a button nose or a third eye, or maybe the eye, the red on the sides aren't his eyes and that is his eye. Uh, I guess the choice is up to you how you're perceiving this, but it's a very stout head. It's got some nice detail. It's different than a lot of Transformers uh, that we've seen. Um, again, the detail on this is kind of outstanding. He's got a, just, a, just a ton of really nice molded detail. Kind of all the way down. His legs kind of sideways there. Kind of all the way down. Really, really nice gears and pistons and, uh, you know, stuff like that. He's got the treads and really nice detail. So moving him back here, 
for articulation, he's pretty standard. Uh, his arm can move out like this on either side. Kind of hindered by this, but you can remove this. I actually like to use it as a gun. Uh, the elbows are 90 degrees. He can turn all the way around if it stays in the, the peg, stays in the hole on his arm here. His head can look up due to transformation and forward and 360. He could have 360 at the waist. Arm keeps falling off, we'll just let that go for now. Forward, all the way. Back, all the way. Out, all the way. Turn right here, this far and this far, and he falls apart again. Ninety degree at the knee, and ankle articulation to about there. Okay, before we pull them all apart, let's do a couple comparisons for size. Here he is next to the Centurion drone, uh, also Brunt. There he is next to Optimus Prime. Hubcap, and because sitting close to me, the bailiff from the Pit of Judgment. So tearing this guy apart, of course you already saw his arm comes off, the other arm comes off. This comes off and could be a gun if you wish. This piece, his gun arm comes off of his arm. These two pieces actually come off right here. Two pieces of the tower piece. If you want to look at this, some of the detail here. I, I like. I would have liked if the, the windows were painted. I think that would have been looked look really cool. Uh, maybe uh, Toy Hacks will come to the rescue on that one. His torso pops off like so, and legs at the knees. So it comes in all these parts. Now he does actually have. So if we undo the leg here. He does actually have this piece right here that could come off on either side. It pops in like that. This, this piece right here is actually on a hinge with a pin. So you can't take that off, but you can take these pieces off right here. It actually lends to some, a, a nice long uh, sort of runway or road, depending on what you want to do with this. Uh, I do like that. I think that's really cool that it, it kind of lends us a little bit more playability with them. Now, uh, to transform them, I'm going to transform them into my favorite mode first, or I'm going to assemble him into my favorite mode first. And to do that, I want to take the, the head on the top of the torso. I'm going to turn that all the way around. My big fat fingers can do it. There we go, like that. And then I'm going to take his waist right here. And if you'll see these tabs, if you look on the inner thighs, there's this little hole here right there and slot. So you tab into slot like that. And that kind of goes on there. So it's real tight in there. And so you see the treads, these little wheels on the bottom. And what you want to do is you want to take this top part and you see those pegs, they peg in oh, like so. So you want to get this piece right there that goes up and over that orange section. So it's like this. And just go ahead and set that aside. So once I already showed you how to open up the legs here, and these legs both are going to gonna go like this. And as you see, there's these two pieces right here. And then there's the treads up front with the and more with the other wheels. I'll take these and just kind of peg them into under the feet here with the five millimeter peg like that. Then you have this hollow bit under here and this sort of kind of flopping around. So you want to take this arm that has the Decepticon logos on it and you want to, there's a slot, see if you can skip right in there and focus right there. And the, there's a kind of peg. So you take it. And mine doesn't actually peg in really well, but kind of keeps it so it doesn't go anywhere. And that forms the, the very end of the runway. And you just clip that on. Like so. 
Now this next part is actually kind of difficult for me. The instructions say to have it like this, and then you take this arm and you see there's these tabs on either end. You align them like, like so. So they're each one facing that way. And then the two pegs are facing up. And then they go in these two holes here like this. And this is the part I have trouble with. I get one goes in really well. I don't have any problems um, lining it up and having the peg go in the slot. And one never does. Ah, that's the one that never does. Never, I always have trouble with that one. It just kind of ends up popping apart all like all apart like that. So I'm gonna take that back piece off, get some more leverage here. And snaps on. Move that one in, see that one goes in nicely. And this one just always has trouble. Okay, it's in and I'll make, just put this right back because I took that off to get all that together. Lay that down like, like so. And what we have is this. So then you take the this little piece right here and it actually has three ports you can put it on. The instructions say to put it over here like so. And you take these two pieces here and there's a hole right here. Slot that in like so. And there you have my favorite mode. This is cool, kind of like very much like Metroplex. Rolls okay, not on this foam piece, but he does roll okay. And it's, it's actually, yeah, besides maybe a little bit here, if you kind of turn, it's fairly solid. Uh, this whole piece, the arm holds it really nicely together. So that is one of his modes. All right, so I have him taken all apart again for his next mode. So you're gonna take this piece again, like this, and the same thing as before, just slot those in the peg holes on the other side of the legs. Like say so you have this piece, just like before. Then what you wanna do is the legs stay like this, open like that, and you wanna have the feet, so the feet are facing together like that, facing each other. And there's a peg hole right there on the back of the heel. And you take that, slot that in there, do that for the other side. Like so, you have something like this. And then, like the instructions say, you wanna take these arms, take this arm piece and just kind of peg it in by the shoulder like that on one side. And on the other one, kind of same thing, take it and just peg it in right there. Kind of have it lay flat. And it gives a little bit of support under there. Take one of these pieces. There is a hole on the side right there. It's actually where the arms are, that like that. So on the other side. I go like that. Alternatively, this could go in here. If I can get that in that hole. Giggity. And like that. So you have a tall tower. So this this mode right here is very much like one of the original modes that where that was in the generation one base mode for this guy. Um, I'll put that picture right over here so you can just see how it compares. This is, I got a nice long runway, which is really good. It's a little small, I would say, but it is, it's a really nice runway. And it's kind of cool. I don't really have uh, any MicroMaster planes, unfortunately. The only MicroMasters I do have for this line are the early, earlier ones. So I could show you kind of a size here. They're all relative size. So it's about the, the same width as a MicroMaster would be, but if you had wings, it might actually run and kind of hit the, hit the building there. 
But as I said before, it has these combat system on either side. So this could be a piece of a much, much longer runway or roadway or whatever you would like. Okay, lastly, we're gonna start off with uh, all of his pieces completely disassembled for his third and final mode. So you again, want to take this piece and turn his head around, put it back like this. Now this time, this is a little different. These pieces do not connect. Instead, you want to take his, what was his legs here, take his feet and kind of all the way down like that. Both sides, all the way down. And so with these, where these go, is they go, these pegs on the top and the pegs, whole pegs on the, or holes on the bottom, go right like this, either side, like so. Then you wanna take these tread pieces that are also part of the feet or part of the legs. And you want the treads on the outside where the blue is. So these kind of connect like this. And if you'll see, you notice on the torso part, there's these little connectors like the commander or command combat ports or whatever they're called. So right here. And just pop them in there like that. On either side. So, so it's like this. Then you want to take the front of the, the arm for the front piece here is where it goes. Make sure it's connected like shown before earlier in the review. And then connect the combat ports together here and there. So you have something that looks like this. So now what you want to do is you want to take this here leg piece and again, rotate it around, make sure they are connected in the slots. So they're, that holds nice and tight. And then see there are two pegs on the back and you want to peg these holes into those holes right there, like just like that. And make sure it's all nice and snug. Now on the back, there is this little port here and you kind of want to just kind of put that out like, like so. And you'll see on the arm, there's a right, there's a little port there. And with that, how that goes is like so. And then you take this piece. It doesn't really connect anything. It just kind of holds down and you just kind of fold it up like that. Just kind of to get it out of the way is really what it's for. So you have this piece here and you have the gun pieces left and the tower. So you want to take that tower piece, put it in the hand, the fist right here in the front, take these here guns and these go on just like that by the hole on the back end right there, just like this. And that's how this goes. Now on the box and in the instructions, it said to lift this up, but I can't for the life of me get this to stay. Cause like this, it would look okay. I was actually looking forward to this mode by seeing it. I think it looked really cool. It's like a gun emplacement. I think that's really awesome. And the fact there's a little spot right down there that you'd be almost able to fit a MicroMaster, or a Battle Master, or whatever they're called in. Not quite, it's a little too big, maybe some of them, but it, it doesn't really work. Um, the original G1 uh, mode of this worked a lot better. So I'll just put that up right here so you could see. And you can see these are orange. Uh, it had a, a much higher lift to it. it. It just overall worked a lot better than this. I, uh, this, they kind of, kind of failed on this mode in my opinion. I like again, I was really looking forward to it. And it's it's not terrible. I mean, it's not. It's not terrible. It, it's it's okay. I uh, it just it does not execute this mode very well. I much prefer the other two modes. And lastly, I just want to show here he is with the Sentinel drone. So you could do some cool things with this. So you could take so Here's the legs. So these are actually quite a bit bigger. So you could take the, here's the, the waist piece from the Sentinel drone. Just plug those in here at the knees, like so. And then you could put maybe his body on there. One of his arms, 
one of the Sentinel drones arms. So you could get sort of a, a different look. And it, it works. Uh, all the articulation's the same. Uh, it's pretty good. It, you know, it still works. Definitely works as as him. Gives him a little height on him. Uh, it's pretty cool, I think, the way they do that, and that these two could actually combine. Um, you could even, they even look good together in other ways. Uh, I suggest if you happen to have this figure to definitely play around with the different combinations because you could do a few different things with them. Uh, that's, that is a, a benefit of, of this particular mold, I think. Um, you could do some interesting things. I right, put that on sideways. But yeah, it's still it's just, it's really cool to do, uh, to see what you could kind of come up with. Stubby legs here. It's still cool to see what you can come up with and maybe build and sort of have fun with. Uh, that is the, the one of the, the benefits of these weaponizer figures. They're the greatest things about them is that you could kind of do whatever your imagination can do. I haven't even tried to, like mix mashing a vehicle mode out of these guys, which I'm sure it's entirely possible. So it's pretty cool. Um, they're fun to play with. So yeah, there you have Earthrise Airwave. Now he's okay as a figure. He's not great. Uh, his, he is colored like an Autobot, which I understand, I get, because they're trying to represent the, the, the base mode from the original Airwave. So that's cool, I'm okay with that. I like the head. I don't like that he falls apart really easy. Like this, this especially right here is, likes to come off all the time. When I was doing this review, trying, like, trying to do my, my talk to you guys, he just kept on falling apart and it got kind of frustrating. Uh, one thing to note that I do like he has a bunch of pieces that you could connect to a ton of other figures in the combat system and make a very large base with long ways, roadways, or airways. Uh, he's, he's okay in that regard. I do, I do appreciate that, that he's very compatible with other weaponizers. And he's really cool with Brunt or the Sentinel in which you could even make your own robot out of him because these pieces are pretty much exactly the way Brunt connects. I thought that was really awesome that maybe is, maybe they didn't intend originally, but kind of ended up that way. So it does have some Lego ability to it. Uh, so yeah, I mean, if you happen to find them in the stores and you're kind of like me in between getting two figures and you want to pick something up, I would say go ahead and pick it up. Now, should you get this if you already have Hot House on order? That's up to you. How big of a base are you trying to build? So that's really what it comes down to. If you like this video, please hit that thumbs up button. Uh, hit the thumbs down button if you have to. Ring the bell for notifications. Subscribe if you haven't. See you next time.